15 through 25. Let me in gospel, the first chapter, verses 18 through 25. It reads, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found a child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. We want to use for a subject this morning, blind faith. Blind faith. Father, we pray now you move James out of the way. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be holy and acceptable in thy sight. For thou art my rock and you are my redeemer. Father, speak to us, your people. For we need a word from you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Thank you, ushers. The legendary twin founders of Rome was supposed to be born of a virgin, Romulus and Remus. Romulus is where we get the word Rome from. The mother was supposed to be impregnated by divine intervention. The Babylonian god, Tamaz, was supposed to be the only begotten son of the god, Eon. His mother also was supposed to be a virgin. There's a number of other virgin births in Greek mythology and mythology. What makes Jesus stand out, I'm so glad you asked, as he's the only begotten son of the living God. The word of God is so real and so rich. You and I can read it today going through one thing and get a particular out of it. But then next year, at the same time, you can read the word of God again. And God will give you a revelation that you see something you've never seen before. Although you read it in Sunday school, although you read it in youth camp, you get something new because the word of God is forever speaking to his people. Another thing about Jesus is in this virgin birth, he's he is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, no other virgin birth pointed us to God. No other virgin birth is the door to God. But Jesus is the only way to God. I was speaking to a young lady just last week, and she was from one of the islands, and she said she wanted to be married. I said, yeah, we're going to pray for you. She said, yeah, you pray to your God, I'm going to pray to my God. didn't register, but my wife registered readily, but I didn't register Miss Doris, because my thing was, I thought everybody was serving the same God that I was serving. I said, well, I'm just going to pray. But she let me know, no, you pray to your God, and I'm going to pray to my God. And we pray between the two. God will answer prayer. Now, I didn't go any further, because I didn't want to get into a debate, but my thing was, I know what my God is able to do. But I don't know nothing about your God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The Gospel of Luke gives us the Marian account. She gives, he gives us Mary's account of everything that took place because Mary, because Luke speaks to the Gentiles. 
and they didn't care anything about a birth. But Matthew, when you read through the 42 generations, you've got to come from somewhere. I need to look at your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, that's why folks always ask you who your people is. Can I preach it like I feel it? That the reason they ask you that is because they try to figure out what type of character do you have. That they're trying to figure out what kind of people. Do you have that prison culture? Yeah. Do you have that drug culture? You got that thug culture? You got that womanizing culture? You got that hoarder culture? They're trying to figure out what is it about you? What, what, where are you from? What is your connection? And I've got a word for you. When they ask me where I'm from, I said, now I know the bloodline is a little muddy, but I've been washed. I wish I had helped you this morning. You, you gotta say it like you're meaning. You, you gotta tell, I've been washed in the blood of life. I, I know grandpa was something else. I, I know my daddy was something else. I know my uncle was something else. And, and I was too at one time, but I've been washed. I, I need you to try it one time, Brother Thompson. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And so Matthew gives us patriarchal view, which was always significant in my point of view, because what do you do when you got to live by Michael Jackson's song, Billie Jean? <laughs> because Joseph lives the lyrics of Michael Jackson's song. That kid is not my son. It gets awkward. The first point is, it gets awkward. This ain't straightforward. This, this stuff is a mess. Mary's account. The angel shows up and he's persuasive. He gives a persuasive argument. He's trying to persuade Mary to accept what God wants to do. He deals with her gently, but he don't deal with Yosef the same way. I got a problem with that. Seems to be a little sexist. You deal with her all gentle like you. You give a persuasive argument, then you tell her at the end, just like you're cutting. Not cousin, you cut. Cut cut Elizabeth, you know. Oh god, oh god was buried, but now she pregnant. You know her husband was old. You know ain't nothing too hard for the Lord. He builds an argument, a persuasiveness. But when he gets to Yosef, he don't handle him as him. Same angel. Same God. Two different messages. So God lets me know in the text that he'll deal with one person one way and deal with them real lightly, but then come back and jump all over my head to get the message. See, God knows how to get his children's attention. Evidently, Mary was a sweetheart of a young lady. But Joseph was rambunctious. Don't come in with that okie doke. I don't want to hear nothing about no virgin bird. We all know you've been looking at your king. I know your king got your email address. I, I know you didn't think I know he been texting you. Oh boy, I like you. That ain't my baby. That, that's your king and the angel has to step in and let him know. I know it's a little awkward. But it's still the way God is moving. goes on. He goes on to let him know it's awkward. And this is how it went down, Yosef. First of all, he let Yosef go to sleep. You know, he can't deal with that joke of awake. <laughs> just, just read it for yourself. I mean, from the time the whole story, he sleep. That book was something else to deal with when he was awake. <laughs> He said, well, let me go and talk to you in this dream. This is how it went down, bro. Bro, this is how it went down. I know it's hard to believe, but this is how it went down. Let me give you the skinny. 
Oh girl, pray. <laughs> she pregnant. She pregnant. This, she pregnant. She ain't no denying it. She got stomach bumps. She got it. But she didn't step out. But I can't lie to you. It ain't your baby. And I promise you, he wasn't dancing like Michael Jackson to hear it. He was upset. It's not your baby, but the baby is the Lord. I can hear Joseph right now in his sleep, kicking his feet. Don't come here with this lie. God ain't never got nobody pregnant, but he's been there, and the reason why everybody did get pregnant. Because two come together does not make a zygote. Right, right. Only God can give life. Right. Joseph didn't want to hear any more of this. The reason the angel shows up is because Joseph didn't believe the story. If he didn't believe the story, the angel would have to come and verify, certify, or validate. The angel shows up. Because when Mary told him this, he said, oh, good. I was born one night, but not last night. I've been away hunting with my dad, but now you're going to tell me now all of a sudden you're pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. This engagement was like marriage. In order to get rid of her, even though they lived in two separate houses, he has to divorce her. We got a problem here. What is the problem? I'm so glad you asked. You playing games with my life. It ain't just a dynamic of you pregnant and if you feed them long enough, they look like me. No, that ain't what this is about. This is real serious business because if I have broken the law and got you pregnant, yeah. now I've got to die with you. Yeah. And I ain't about to die with you when I ain't done nothing wrong. I've got to get rid of you. i got to chew off my own arm and get away from you. And so now the angel of God must step in because Joseph ain't hearing it. How many times has people told us something and we didn't believe them and they was telling the truth? No, don't come in with that. I, I remember growing up, I took, I took a few whoopings. <laughs> Because my dad would tell me, them folks can't be lying on you. <laughs> and then he would, he, he would say something like this. Y'all was raised by the same parents. Y'all know. I guess they lying on you. And I got grown, I said, yeah, they lied this time. <laughs> they lied that time, daddy. They lied. Well, it don't matter if they lied or not. I got you for the times I didn't know what you did. <laughs> He was not about to take the death penalty. So God had to intervene. Joseph didn't want it anymore. What do you do when you don't want your Mary no more? <laughs> While he slept on the couch watching the sorry cowboys. <laughs> God got to deal with him. God says to him, do not be afraid of Mary. She's pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Paul Tillich said it this way. He says, doubt isn't the opposite of faith. It's an element of faith. He's wrestling in his mind even though the angel is talking to him. Is this real? This has never been done in human history. All these other virgin births, that's mythical. We know that ain't true. But you mean to tell me in real life and experiential time that Mary is now pregnant by Hashim? The, the, he, she's pregnant by Elohim? She, she's pregnant by El Shaya? She, she's pregnant by God? He's having a difficult time. 
think any man in here, any woman in here, would have a difficult time being the first one. There's nobody he can text. There's nobody he can call. There's nobody he can email and say, man, I know how you feel. No! Everybody would tell you, if you believe that, you are a fool. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bring me to my second point, awareness. Because when God gets ready to do something, and I want you to understand what I just said again. When he gets ready to do something, yeah. there's nothing we can do about it. Yes, sir. Right. Right. Uh, you can play the Psalms, the, the healing, and you can say Selah. Yeah, yeah. And all Selah means is hit pause. Right. Yeah. Pump the brake, but it's going to keep rolling in a minute. Yes, all you and I can do when God wants to do a particular thing in our lives, in our families, whenever God wants to do whatever he wants to do, all we can say is amen. Amen means it is so. That there's nothing else I can do but surrender. God is making Joseph aware that there's nothing you can do about this. I have chosen you. I know you think your mom and daddy and her mom and daddy put this arranged marriage together. I know, yes, I allowed them to arrange it, but I already had my baby coming down here, Isaiah 714, uh, 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 735 years earlier. I knew now unto him a son would be born of a virgin. I knew, but what you didn't recognize was when you was in Sunday school, when you, you was in the synagogue and they read that text, what you didn't understand was you and Mary was in there also. And, and so it is a lot of times in our lives when things are about to happen. We don't see ourselves being plugged in, but every now and then your name gets plugged in an equation that you didn't see a solution out of. She's going to have a son. You're going to be the daddy. Ain't nothing else to talk about. I'm just here to make you aware of what I'm going to do. You, you go surrender because I'm God. I'm just coming. I'm coming to let you know I'm not going to deal with you like I dealt with Mary. You are a man. I wish I could preach it like I feel it. That people can I preach it like I feel it. I wish women would quit feminizing men. Stop feminizing it. If he ain't got no right, let him walk to you. If he ain't got nowhere to sleep, let him sleep outdoors. Make a man be a man. He asks you to go out to eat, don't have no money for the tip. Be a man. Be a man. I tell my daughter, I said, I, I do not feminize him. <laughs> He's supposed to wear fruit of the loom under, underwear. <laughs> not fruit of the loom panties. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be vulgar. I'm not trying to be crass. But when we have a generation of women now who will pack a man on their back. God makes Joseph be a man. You gonna take care of my baby. Ain't nothing else to talk about. It's my baby. You gonna take it. Now we got a problem. Here's the problem. I'm glad you asked. When he takes on God's baby, he loses his heir. So he loses in the process of being a part of God's salvational grace. Because the first child got a double portion of everything his daddy had. But it had to be his child. But now this is not his child, it's God's child. Which means that the man can't be selfish. He has to look out for his children. And God says, I'm not going to baby you like I did Mary. Oh, I, 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 I listened to Mary. I watched her cry. I, oh, yeah. Oh, I was a loving father to Mary. I'm a loving father to you, but I'm going to be different because you're mine. Yeah, that's it. And this is what you're going to do. And I wish that fathers had the, the power to do what they used to do back then. I wish grandpas had the power to do because now children protect their children. When I was growing up, and when you was growing up, Papa will get you. He, he spent some money on but he spent your butt too if you act it up. 
But now, don't, I don't want everybody whooping my children. <laughs> I believe in time. Time I ain't never work. You give them time out based on how old they are. So at two years old, they get two minutes of time out. Time out don't work. I tried no children's. I said, I'm going to try this European model, this European model. I said, boy, get in the corner. When I told him to get in the corner, he walked right out the corner. I said, baby, baby, to my wife never gets something. She always believed in the African American experience. I said, give me the wooden spoon. When I told him to get in the corner, he got right in there. God knows what works for you and I. She gonna have it. You gonna raise it, and that's it. The problem is though, Red Flags had to go for Joseph because he understood theological terminology. He said he gonna save his people from these sins. We live under a sacrificial system. He gonna save it, so there's got to be a sacrifice. God was gonna know this boy gonna die. Your boy for the whole world. He's the firstborn. He won't receive nothing, but his portion is in heaven. Bring me to my third point: acceptance. Because of all the preaching I've been doing for the last twenty minutes, Joseph ain't said yes yet. Dr. King was a rough brain, so <laughs> I hear you, you're talking good. I ain't said nothing yet. Deal ain't sealed. How do you accept your wife being pregnant? And you know you wasn't now. How do you accept God's child? You're still wondering, is it God's child? yourself in the equation that was spoken 730 years ago and you didn't see your name in that but now all of a your name is in print we have God's baby and God gonna be with us Joseph didn't sleep the whole while God raises him from his sleep with all questions answered how do you accept Joseph? Gabriel said in a dream, blind faith. There's no other way to receive it. And you and I are just like Joseph. There's some things that hit our lives. We ain't see it coming. I thought about giving y'all one a mic, and I put this over my eyes, and y'all tell me where to walk, but I scared. <laughs> y'all might, might want to get a brother today. <laughs> this is what Joseph is. This is what he is. He, he can't see, he can only hear. That's what faith is about. Faith is not what you can see, faith is what you can hear, faith is what you can believe in your heart. Faith is intuitive. Faith is not intelligent. No, no, no. Faith is obedient to the clarion call that comes from God. And all Joseph can do as he walks along by himself is to believe it is God's will. Right. And I, I, I don't fully understand it. And if I can be truthful, which I really don't like it. But it's not for me to understand. It's not for me to like it's only for me to be obedient. And, and that's what it is for you and I. This is where you and I connect with Joseph. Because there's things that happen in our lives that we don't understand. You, you and I can sit on the side of the bed. We can sit in the chair, sit on the couch, watch a football game, watch homework, whatever you watch. But there are times that those thoughts creep into your mind. How did this happen? How did I end up crying? What, what am I going to do, oh Lord? How am I going to make it? Which, what, what is this? And God don't always tell you why, but he will show you how to walk it out. It's called blind faith. It's getting up every morning with the same question in your heart. But every morning you get up 
doing the same thing. I put one foot in front of the other every morning. And before you know it, God would have showed you the solution by walking it out day by day. But the one thing you and I cannot do is sit down and quit. There's no place in God's program for quitters. So how does he do it? Blind faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, which means you're blind. He didn't have any examples to follow on the virgin birth. But he did have examples to follow in faith. And I'll leave you with this. Moses led the children of Israel through the Red Sea. Blind faith. Joshua walked the children of Israel around the Jericho walls one time for six days. And on the seventh day, he walked around seven times. And they shouted and blew the horns. And the walls fell down by blind faith. Shadrach, Meshach, and bad Negro. They went into the fire and furnace. They didn't know whether they were going to live or die. But one thing they had made up their mind was they were going to walk in there by blind faith. When you read that story out of the Septuagint, the Greek version, it's very interesting because around Daniel 3 and 23, the Bible points out that they were shouting and praising God before they went into the fiery furnace. So I, I, I get something from that. If I can get up every morning giving God praise, I feel like preaching that, y'all. If, if I can get up every morning telling them thank you when I want to just throw up, I, I believe that's blind faith. If I can get up every morning and encourage somebody else while I'm going through a literal hell, I believe that's blind faith. I, I think every now and then you just got to throw your hands in the air and wave them and you just don't care. Because you know Jesus Christ is alive in you. And somebody ought to say, oh yeah. Walked up on a giant 10 feet tall, weighed over 400 pounds, and he took five little stones. And we all know a 12 year old ain't got the power to hit a giant in the head, but that was blind faith when he threw it. All he had to do was throw it, and God was going to get on it. You ought to holler out blind faith. So, how you going to make it? I'm about to let you go. How you going to make it through this season? Because for somebody, the holidays is tough. Hey, for somebody, Christmas and Thanksgiving is rough. Somebody died during Thanksgiving. Somebody died during the Christmas season. For them, it's not a happy holiday. For them, they're going through every day. But I got a word for that person. You just get up every morning and you give God praise and you go through it by blind faith. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're going to make it through whatever you're going through. I don't know how you're going to make it, but I do know this. If you get up every morning with your mind made up, I'm going to give God a praise. I'm going to give God a shout. I'm going to give God a hallelujah. I'm going to give God a hallelujah. I'm going to give God a hallelujah anyhow. No matter what I'm going through, I'm going to make it day by day using blind faith. Blind faith. I can't go by what I see. I can't even go by what I feel. But on a daily basis, I will use blind faith. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen.